Let's turn our attentions now to hockey and we have Sam Spooner, Manx Radio's hockey correspondent in the studio. Before we get down to the domestic fixtures this weekend, uh, let's talk about backers because what a triumph they had uh, in the EH uh, Tier 2 Championships on Sunday, uh, last Sunday. Uh, they knocked out Lindum on flicks eventually. Goals from Craig Lease and Andrew Whiting. Uh, well, they scored to, to make it a, a two-all game after 70 minutes. Then it went to flicks and uh, Jamie Brown netting the winner. Euphoria for him. He was in England Hockey's Team of the Week. Um, and today we found out who backers will play in the semi-final. Yeah, they'll be playing uh, East London men's first at Lee Valley. So the uh, pitch that was used during the 2012 Olympics. Um, and it's a great achievement for backers. The the game was uh, the first half was sort of you know it was neutral it was it, both teams deserved to have a goal in that half the second half backers is I say every week their determination to win or get something out of a game even when the pressure's on was magnified in that second half they taught every person that was watching there how to defend properly I think it's the off off the ball movement of the backers players which is also I mean second to none in Manx hockey. Um, they're going to come up against some very, very tough opponents, you'd imagine, uh, at Lee Valley. How far can backers go? It's not just a success story for backers, by the way. This is a success story for Manx hockey as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you've got the rivalries throughout the season. So Vikings backers, Valkyries backers. Those rivalries have kind of been pushed to one side. So this is fantastic for Manx hockey to have a team representing them in the semi-final of an EHC competition is fantastic and massive well done to all the backers lads um and i really really think they could go all the way we don't know too much about east london men's first at the moment we haven't had too much chance to look into them and see what their form guide is but they they've just shown that they can beat one of the best sides in the competition so yeah they could go through to the final and they've got that confidence going so who knows how long this run could go on but all the best to backers um, in the semi-final of the EH Tier 2 Championships. When it comes to domestic fixtures and the PwC Men's Premier Division this weekend, there's a tasty one. Uh, Vikings A against Valkyries A, always quite close. Which way do you see this one going? We talk about rivalries. This is uh, Valkyries A, Backers A is probably one of the biggest, but you know this one's probably up there as well. Vikings A this weekend have got a full-strength side. Um, they've pulled uh, Nathan Evans up um, and... Valkyries are struggling this weekend. Um, they've got a number of players away. Their B team are involved in the relegation battle as well, so they're struggling to find the resources to pull up as well. Um, the players missing, you've got Dave Hall, Ollie Webster, Chris Caldwell, both Stevenson brothers, and Russell Miller. And Greg Miller only gets off his flight on Saturday morning, so barring any problems with the, with the flights, and Greg Miller should be there, So you can see that they've got a core of their team missing. So Valkyries are going to struggle tomorrow, but they're always a very physical side. Luis Luis Novo-Smith in the middle there will always calm things down, and Vikings will be given a run for their money. And how many times have we talked about Luis Novo-Smith and how he runs the game really from the middle of the park? But there's a threat coming from the other end in Vikings A. Tom Wilson just knows where the back of the net is, and he's so clinical as well. Yeah, I mean, Andy Whiting started the season um, in sort of challenging him for that top goal scorer position. And Tom, the past couple of weeks, you know, mainly down, really down to postponements. I mean, Vikings men's have got three games in hand on backers. Um, has been uh, slowed down in recent weeks, but Tom's always good for a goal in the game. And he will be fighting as hard as anybody on that pitch to get a result. Elsewhere in the division below that, in PwC Men's Division 1, you've highlighted two fixtures here, one at the top of the league, one at the bottom. We'll start with the one at the top of the league. Castletown A have been in fine form. I mean, they're a premiership team in waiting, aren't they? And they go against the Saracens A side in second place, who themselves have shown great promise so far this season. And it's only a matter of time if they can keep this group of players together before they themselves are promoted to the top flight. I love a Southern Derby between Castown and Saracens. I played in it from Saracens' point of view and I've played in it from a Castown point of view. They're the hardest games you can possibly play in. Everybody wants to win them. Nobody wants to lose them. Saracens ran, ran Castown close last time. It was a 2-1 win for Castletown. Castown now are undefeated this season. They've scored 50 goals. Their front three have been fantastic. Um, they've only conceded six. So Saracens have actually got a job on their hands to win this and it is a game of experience versus youth we've been saying all season that Saracens most of Saracens players are 21 or under you know the exceptions are probably the goalkeeper Andy and uh, Andy Winstanley the winger as well 
But that being said, Saracens could cause a shock here. Castletown have had an easy ride so far. Saracens have shown themselves to have some great character, if a little bit of inexperience. Um, you know, mentally, I think they've suffered at times this season, especially in the second half of games. But yeah, this one's going to be a, this one's going to be a great game, and I'm, I'd love to be there to watch it. Do you think that's where the game will be won and lost? It will probably come down to just that little bit more experience that Castletown have, which in the big games it does count for quite a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at sort of Castletown men's A side, and they're all mid twenties to early thirties, so they've got a, they're all veterans really um, of Manx hockey. Most of them have been playing for ten years plus on and off. Whereas Saracens, their squad's barely been playing in the senior leagues for three years. So it is going to come down. I think it probably will come down to that sort of second half performance and the experience of Castletown showing through. Um, just to, to provide a, a little bit of an insight into the Castletown side, because you did say that they do have more experience, but they do have young, young blood themselves. I mean, Robin Masson as well has been a revelation really in front of goal. He knows where the back of the net is, much like Tom Wilson does in the top flight. Um, He's been scoring goals for fun, but it's his speed as well, which scares the living daylights out of defenders. And goalkeepers, I might add as well. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I've I've played against Robin for a number of years, and I I forget that he is still so young because I've known him and played against him for five or six years. He's actually, you'd probably call him an experienced player now because he has been playing with the likes of Oli Stereopolis, uh, Stereopolis, um, Don Stewart, and the... He's been playing with them for, for, for years and sort of grown up through the teams with them as well. So he is going to be a key factor tomorrow. If he can keep his head, then Castown should win the game. And I suppose if you get involved in the Manx hockey system from an early age, you've already been playing for years and years and years and you've got quite a bit of match experience already, which stands you in good stead. George Powell, worth a mention for Saracens A, uh, the captain of Saracens, I think. Um, And he's got a very wise head for um, such a young man. Yeah, and he's leading that team um, and he's leading it very, very well. He's been probably their standout player of the season. Um, He's been, he's leading a team of players that are incredibly young, but so he's had to show how old he can be and show his maturity on the pitch, which for somebody so young is, can be quite difficult, but he's shown that in abundance this year and played really, really well. Um, Reverse of fortunes then, back as Colts against Valkyries B at the other end of the table. Uh, this one, in all the other fixtures they've played, um, they've conceded a fair few goals. That's why they're down there at the wrong end of the table. They can't seem to keep it out of um, their goal at one end. They can't seem to find it at the other end. Who, is, who are the favourites for this one? I think you have to give the favourites tag to uh, Valkyries B, in all honesty. I think Cronbourne backers, uh, Manx Colts, have struggled this season. That being said, though, I umpired their game against Vikings Men's C the other week, and their first half performance was fantastic. Um, they did have Andy Neal available for that game, um, and he provided that sort of drive for the juniors in that side to to pick up and really drive forward. And Val- Vikings C were put under the cosh by them at times and it was a really end-to-end first half the second half Vikings C were able to uh, pick things up and change the gear slightly but I think Valkyries men's B are the favourites here that being said don't ever back cut backers into a corner because they will come out fighting it's funny how we talk about experience as being a positive thing for Castletown A I think if you used experience as a word to describe backers Colts they might be a little offended by it but they do have some players who have been around the block a bit yeah, you know, they've got Peter Vernon Brown in there, who is still an excellent midfielder. Um, they've had Dave Lewin playing at the back as well. Gareth Nichols in Nets has been uh, playing a few games for them this season as well. And then you've got the captain, Tim Leeming, um, who has ended up umpiring a few of their games. But when he plays, it, it, he is still a very, very good player. And that sort of experience in the sides is, uh, is invaluable. I can tell you, uh, Dave Lewin, who you mentioned there, is currently... Uh, in New Zealand. Um, I don't know if he's taking pleasure. He's at the test match between New Zealand and England in Auckland. I don't know if he's taking pleasure at the fact that England were all out for 58. Um, but that's how it comes across. Ian Richardson, also a familiar name from the Manx hockey scene. He's there as well. Sam Spooner, thanks very much. You'll Thank be bringing the, uh, the rest of the previews with Ed Oldham uh, tomorrow from half past 12.